G'day swingers and welcome to Macca's Old School episode 26. As promised we're live today from the beautiful Bayview Hotel in sunny downtown Gladesville. Wonderful place, it's one of the few venues still that uh, has live music. Uh, it's a good family pub. Come on down to the Bayview, this is the green room here today. Uh, a couple of quick announcements to make. Uh, we have our very special guest, Mr. Graham Abbo Henry. It's part four with Graham. We had another guest today uh, that was organised, but look, that's fallen through. My apologies for that. There's some legal problems there. Uh, we're not going to say who it is because uh, we'll have another bash and try and get try and get the gentleman on before the end of the year. Uh, without further ado, though, we have the man of the hour. This is part four with Graham. We haven't spoken to Graham for uh, a year, be a year now. Uh, he's been a good man and very supportive of uh, Macca's Old School. So without further ado, we'd like to introduce Mr. Graham Abbo Henry uh, to the show. Hi, mate. Graham, good to see you. Good to see you. Good Bit of fun here over here. Well, it's, yeah, mate, she was wild years ago, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, but we're trying to step it up and change things a little bit. We've been promoting this for ages. And we're very lucky to, to have Mr. Henry uh, with us today. Uh, very lucky indeed. Don't forget, like and subscribe, please. Click, click. Um, Graham, we'll, we'll get straight into it, mate. Yeah, mate. Um, as usual. A um, couple of things I'd like to start with. We've done some stuff recently. Let's Rogers kick off, mate. What, 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 with, with, with Rogerson yeah. and, and Lan Franchi, or yeah. Franchi they called him. What, what's your, we'll kick off with a bit of that, and then also ask you a bit about Chris Flannery uh, yeah. as well. You were involved, direct. what's your views, uh, mate? What, you I, you I, lived it. Where do you want to start? Uh, I'm, we'll start with Lan Franchi. On really what happened that day. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it was prior to that. I mean, he was part of our gang. He was a young bloke who joined our gang. You know what we call an apprentice you know we put yep. him on board and we're teaching him the ropes because he was a pretty willing young bloke and uh anyway he only just started to work for us and uh only there i was only there for about six or eight weeks with him and then i uh i got shot by the police on the uh 12th of uh june and he got murdered on about the 22nd or something of june yep uh yep. now I heard uh, John Killick say something that he didn't think that he was involved in the armed robbery or armed robberies. And, uh, well, that'd be totally wrong. I mean, he wasn't in our gang for the fucking hell of it. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, we were armed robbers and we were uh, professional. Fucking first grade fucking, uh, uh, you know. Well, yeah. We robbed armed bands, we robbed fucking payroll, we robbed fucking bank, we robbed any motherfucker. Any, you know, so, yeah. uh, that's what we were. And, yes, he was involved in armed robbery and... Two weeks prior, he, he was, and two months prior to that, he'd ripped off the fucking police, which they showed him blue murder to some extent. It didn't quite go down that way, but yeah. he ripped off some drugs that belonged to police that were protecting the, uh, the that, drug dealer, and you know they put him on the radar for a fucking start. Yeah, yeah. And so he slung a little bit of money there to get through the fucking break. And then he was on his way to a robbery, and uh, with uh, two blokes that uh, were very well known to me in the prison system, and both uh, heroin addicts, uh, Paul, Paul Astara, uh, who wasn't much fucking chop, and, uh, and uh, Steve Pauly, who was a terrific uh, boxer, terrific bloke, tough bloke. He's a fucking lovely bloke. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, he was, you know, War Warren saw an opening for a smart lad, so he was selling them the heroin. And then they'd go and do a, a robbery together. And at the end of the day, when they were divvying up the money, yeah. you know, uh, you know, and in those days they were probably getting, you know, thirty or forty thousand out of a bank top odds, you know. Yeah. And uh, so he'd come back and he'd say, "Well, you owe me eighteen thousand for the heroin I was selling, you, paid in drugs." <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah. that's what he did. So. Yeah. But on his way this morning, uh, the policeman pulled over the car. It was a stolen car. Pulled him over, have a chat with him, and Warren sat up and, and really let go of it. And now I know that happened. I was in, involved in the game. Yeah. I know what fucking happened. I, when you've lived the life on the inside, yeah. you fucking know the facts. If you don't know the facts, yeah. you can, look, everyone can have an opinion. Yeah. Every, yeah everyone that's... in life's got an opinion. You've only got to read crime fucking books. Yeah, you know, yeah. they've all got an opinion. They're all fucking different. Yeah, that's right. You know yeah. what I mean? Unless yeah. you've lived on the inside, and have lived the fucking life, 
And don't fucking quote me thinking it's fucking facts or, yeah. you know, I'm not saying that John quoted it a fact. He didn't. He just said, I don't believe he was involved in robberies or yeah. he was on his way to a robbery that day. Well, he was. Yeah. And, yeah, right. uh, and as I say, that was the catalyst that broke the store, that broke the camel's back because, mm. you know, you couldn't attack the fucking police. If you attacked the fucking police, you were fucking gone. Yeah. They weren't That's called awesome. the Brotherhood for nothing in those days. They yeah. were the biggest gang in fucking town. Yeah, right. They're yeah. still fucking up. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, so they controlled the fucking situations. And so they had to fucking... So they went to Ned and Ned fucking set him up. There's no doubt about that. And that was a complete straight out fucking murder. They let him down to the fucking pathway and they fucking murdered him. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and uh, well, your not views they was... murdered him, fucking yeah. uh, Roger murdered him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, Ned they came out to see me about two weeks later. I was at Long Bay at the time because yeah. I'd already been pinched on this matter that the police shot me out. So I threatened an undercover policeman with his life. Yeah. So, you know, I was breaking the rules. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. I was threatening the fucking authorities of which you weren't to do. Yeah. Not in the organised crime so. So I broke the fucking rule. So I accepted the fucking fact, went to jail, did my own business, paid my own way out of the fucking jail. Yeah, right. And did about 18 fucking months over this drug deal. Yeah. But I got sentenced to seven years on, but, you know, I went to the right authorities through old Paddles Anderson, who had the best connections in Sydney yeah. in those days, always did have and uh, the most powerful fucking gangster really in Sydney, yeah, as far right, as yeah. connections were. Yeah, yeah. Not as far as being dangerous or, but, you know, he was a willing bloke, but he was a smart, intelligent. Smart cookie. So yeah. I went to him and I did my business through all that. But all of those things, as I say, got me sloughed up and then Rogerson did this, Ned come out and see me when I was at Long Bay on remand. That's what we were talking about. So. Yeah. He came out and saw me and I said, right, what's the story here? Because they're fucking giving you a bad fucking bag and here I'm walking around knocking blokes fucking out over you. Yeah, yeah. You know, anyone, we were still on remand at this stage. And I said, uh, so what What happened? And he said, I fucking took him down there. He said, oh, I just said, fucking make sure you haven't got the gun. I took the gun off him. Yeah. He told me the same story as he told the fucking court. Yeah, yeah. Right? But, of course he was cute. You know, yeah. all that came out later. Did I know then? No, I took his fucking word for it because he was my partner in crime. Was I sus on it? Fucking very. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, Did he carry a gun all the time? Who, right? Ned? No. Yeah. no. No, um, I was the one me and Frenchie as well. Oh, like, did he, did yeah, he carry a gun? It was, yeah, every, we talked about that. There was a, a defective yeah, old piece of no, shit. No, he ate. Right? Oh, yeah. well, of course yeah. it was stuck on him, but he was loaded yeah. with it. Uh, yeah, he yeah. was fabricated, as John said. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. an old gun from the fucking 1800. I was going to say, it was, no, a, it was about so 80 So it would have been a body old. one that was still in their drawer at the fucking the old fucking police station. Yeah. You know, that they from the armed robbery squad. And they probably had plenty of spares there to fucking throw into people's cars. Yeah. As they did with me that day. Yeah, yeah me that day, they uh, threw one in North the car, yeah, yeah, and they said yeah. that I had picked out a gun and named it at 30 armed fucking police with shotguns. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that was the reason they shot me. Well, fucking, biggest fucking fabrication you've ever it heard. It wasn't even on you. No, no, no. I had a gun on me, yeah, but yeah. Uh, the gun was in the concert. In the car. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I already saw the bloke take off, and I knew I was set up, so yeah. I just fucking, next minute they snuck up on me, yeah. and they show on that blue murder, of course, another embellished fucking bullshit story like yeah. all the underbelly ones yeah yeah you yeah. know they, they they run in and run out they see me in the car doing this drug deal they trip over and the gun accidentally goes off and blows out the driver's seat window yeah well they did that didn't happen they came to the side door of the fucking car the driver's side and tried to blow me fucking head off but i jerried and i freed myself that way yeah went back pellets went through me Three of my fingers here, bounce on my fingers, went into this eye. So you, were leaving, right? you were leaving, Graham? You were leaving? No, I was, was going to go. I was going to lay yeah. down and put my foot on the yeah, throttle yeah. and fucking <laughs> just go through the lights. Yeah, yeah. Take the pump. Yeah. So fucking I knew I was gone. Yeah, right. And, uh, but I didn't know fucking who it was straight away, but of course it was going to be the fucking force. Yeah. But I didn't know the bloke was wired up when I was doing the business. I'd seen him do business with other crims, so wasn't like I was falling into him for the first time. Yeah. He'd already yeah. done business with other crims on you. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, to make myself sweat, when I got out, I made it a point of going up where he drunk at the White Horse and walking in where he was. I walked over and I said, mate, you did your job, I did fucking mine. Yeah. All right? Yeah. 
no fucking, that's where it ends. That's where it yeah, should be yeah, fucking yeah. ends. See, because at the end of the day, you get more booze with honey. That wasn't yeah. fucking up your ass. It's that true. was going fucking in using this. That's true, mate. Right? Well, so, it, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's true. You know, and that's exactly what I did. So after that, two of my gang were pinched for fucking guns, drugs. Well, he was the fucking bloke. Yeah. Right? So I went to him, gave him, and they said, we work for me. Yep. You know, because I was the organiser of crime. Ned might have been the prolific headline that he was the, yeah. you know, the leader of the gang, and uh, that was never our commitment. I wasn't his bodyguard, and I certainly wasn't his fucking. We were just partners. Yeah. And yeah. he didn't have a gang when I met him in '76, so I put the gang together. Yeah, right. Right. Yep. Except one bloke, and uh, they they formed the group that dominated Sydney for fucking uh, many, many years. years. When until was the last the time you saw him before he passed, Graham? Or? I saw him in the neck yeah. at um, the Long Bay yeah. uh, while I was in the cell with him and uh, then I realised that he was uh, not only rolling on the police and fucking um, making up stuff, but even on behalf of the ICAC, but he, no he nominated 92 police that he knew were corrupt. Now, Ned wouldn't have known fucking 20. Yeah, yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it just goes to show that the ICA investigators, the ICAC investigators, were fucking helping him. They were throwing up photos and he'd make up a fucking yarn about it. If they yeah, had any right. fucking, just, you know, he was just, they're, they're just there to wreck careers. Yeah, yeah. Because they're yeah. doing to the politicians. It's like they're enablers. They're yeah, enablers. Of course. Yeah. 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 Anyway, they, they bodied up a statement of mine. They kept me in solitary for two and a half years. Thought they could pressure me into fucking turning. Yep. And, uh, they keep me if they'll fucking sentence me. Yeah, I'm not going to make that story and say yeah. I paid the police or I saw Ned pay the police. Yeah. So they yeah. bodied up a statement and said that I did. And I said, well, play it because I made a tape recorded interview. Yeah. And uh, and I said, so that just goes against everything you've just said. So next minute, you know, I was booted out of the witness box within about two, two and a half minutes. Or, <laughs> that was the quickest, yeah. You know what I mean? And there was headlines the next day. Henry ejected fucking from the witness box. Yeah. And uh, that was the end of it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I finally got out of solitary confinement. Yeah. You know, yeah. but, um, you but um, there. Yeah. You know, that, that that was all the fucking story there. Now, as far as, uh, is that what all you want to know in regards to Warren? Because yeah, Warren didn't last long. You yeah. know what I mean? He ran around, he was, he he was, was a little bit hectic and we had to pull him into gear. Yeah, right. You yeah. know, we he had to pull him into gear. Said, Mate, he was like a young soldier. Yeah. Really, yeah. And then he started running with Sally Ann. Yep. Huckstep, the, the, Huckstep, the uh, prostitute from King's Cross. It was a terrific little sort in a day, a fucking terrific sort. Yeah. She went out with a few of my mates, a bloke called David John Keller at the time. He's no friend of mine these days. He's a federal police informer, a crime oh. commission informant, turned drag queen. Oh. And, um, really? you know, lives on a boat somewhere yeah. in Thailand or wherever he's hiding out. And um, anyway... Uh, uh, but, you know, I gave him a rap in my book, actually. I said, you know, what a good bloke he was and solid and, you know, he copped a life sentence. Yeah. But, um, you know, they tried to throw him into the murder too, that he had something to do with the killing of Sally Ann. And then they said Ned and Roger were involved. And here comes oh, all the bullshit. I was right? going so, to say, mate, what's, what's your view on Sally Ann? Well, well, I know the fucking yeah. facts because yeah. Ned came to me. I'd already left the fucking gang. Yeah. Right? And then Ned came to me and said... I'm gonna fucking kill that fucking Sally Ann. I said, what fucking for? Yeah. And he said, uh, he said, you can come down. He said, come down. He said, I'm gonna get her next week. So he called me this night. The, the, on the night that he called me, I met him near Hyde Park, where she was gonna go for the meet the following week. Right. I turned up there, and next minute she's walking down the street, and he said, I'll show you who it is in a minute. Now that's right, he didn't tell me until she turned up. And then she walked down I said, what her? Yeah. He said, I said, why? He said, oh, she's been ratting on the cop, so we're going to fucking get rid of her. And I went, fucking. He said, do you want to be that? I said, are you fucking kidding? Yeah, you know, yeah. But mate, <laughs> I don't kill fucking women. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, probably only one I would have ever fucking killed. But I um, I said, no, no way in the fucking world. We don't, wouldn't even stick me out into it. So I avoided it. You know, a few weeks later, she went. Now they all say, you know, Chris Murphy said this, the solicitor. Everyone, all the crime reporters, oh, Roger fucking did this, Roger was involved, Roger went there to the park. It's all fucking crap. Yep. 100 fucking percent. I, as I keep saying to people, 
I lived on the fucking inside of that life. Yeah. If you don't live on the inside, shut your fucking mouth. Yeah. Because you yeah. don't fucking know the fucking facts. Yeah. You know, people have got Ned down as a fucking serial killer. Yeah. I've heard people, it was the reason I got off the platform of TikTok and, and fucking yeah. Instagram and all that, because these people talk about people they don't know fuck all about, they've just read about, yeah. read the newspapers, fucking put together their own fucking things like the silly psychos on them underbelly shows or the fucking, yeah. you know, tough nuts or fucking whatever it is they want to put together. They really do embellish it. Oh, they, they fucking, fucking just blow it, you know. And they make Roger out that he was involved in this killing, this killing, the killing of Flannery, the fucking killing of, right, uh, the fucking Michael Drew that he drove Flannery there. Yeah. Fucking shit. Listen, I was involved in the conversations. Yep. I met Chris in the prison. Right. The same as that Ray Mooney. Yep. Who was, you had on a few months. We had on recently. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, he's good at what he does and everything, but at the end of the day, Mr. Mooney, you weren't involved in organised crime. So you don't know the facts of what fucking happened up here. No one just wanted to embellish the truth, as you said about Ned. I oh, wanted to embellish the truth because he didn't have the balls to tell fucking Chris. Are you fucking kidding? He would have picked fucking Chris up and shot him through a fucking window, window. and pulled his head off. <laughs> right? right? Yeah. Right. You know, or fucking just jammed him there. And yeah. I would have fucking jumped in with him. Because yeah. I was the one who wanted to go down and just knock him, and then Ned wanted to bring the police into it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and change it. So they put on this meat. And then he walked in, as it shows on Blue Murder, he thinks I walk in the door and thinks I'm the body. Oh, I saw your bodyguard behind the door. Fucking, that yeah. never happened. He walked straight in the door. G'day, Graham, fucking good to see you, mate. How yeah. you going, Chris? Yeah. I said, I believe you want to fucking knock us. Yeah, yeah. And he said, mate, I've never fucking said that. And I said, well, yeah. Here's fucking Ned and Roger, they want to have a fucking yak. I couldn't give a flying fuck about it. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, right. Right, so I just listened to the bullshit and then at the end of the day, he said, no, I didn't say that. Well, we know he did. Yes. And uh, he told Dr Nick Paldos and uh, Croc Palmer, who run a legal gaming fucking play, and then they told George and George leaked the information to us. Yeah, right. And um, this is before he became George Freeman's fucking bodyguard. Yeah, yeah. Right, so I don't know what Mr Mooney's fucking thoughts are on him and, you know, apparently he seems to have liked him and I liked him myself when I first fucking oh, met him. That was my next question. You know what I mean? Say, I liked him as a bloke, you yeah, know, like when yeah. I first met him in the prison system. But And I also knew from other blokes in Melbourne, like Peter Croft and Greg Workman and blokes like that, that he was a fucking toe cutter. Yeah, you right. know, a toe cutter in this life means that you'll fucking shoot your mate in the fucking back, you don't give a fuck and you get paid. You get paid. Yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. That's what Chris's reputation was and it fucking fitted him to a glove. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? So... Was that rent a kill a lot to do with the media? Oh, uh, well, kill was well. nicknamed off us. Yeah, you know was it wasn't really? I mean? yeah, no, yeah. It came from Melbourne or... Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, and then Mr Mooney knocked around with him a couple of times after prison and fucking knew his family and so did I. You know, yeah. and his perception of them and mine, they were, they're both two opinions because up here he, th he, he thought he was going to take over Freeman and all that. And I said, well, what have they got that you want to take over? Yeah. We had a meeting about this. I was with fucking Flannery when they did it. Yep. And she turned up and I, I don't speak in front of fucking women. Yeah. So yep. I walked away from the table after giving them a fucking a mouthful and saying, why the fuck would you want to drag us into your fight with fucking Freeman when everything they've got today is legal? Yeah. Bar yeah. the fucking SP that George fucking runs on his own. That's all you're going to take over. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, you know, we don't want to move into the cross or fucking do anything. Yeah. We're, we're earning enough fucking money now. If it ain't broke, well, like, I think You know it, what yeah. I mean? So, yeah. so I said, uh, you know, so Bing, that put a fucking nail on my coffin. Right. Right, you know, as far as he was concerned. And she didn't like it either. And she said, he's going to stop your fucking climb. We know that happened. We know that conversation took place. There's other conversations that took place. But at the end of the day, Ned then, Ned always liked someone he could try and utilise. Yep. So because of the situation we were in and he could see all this fucking ego shit coming up that he was going to take over the old guard. And I said, well... Mate, there's blokes in that gang now that are fucking 60, like Stan the Man Smith, and yep. he'd fucking wipe you off the fucking face of the fucking earth. Yeah. And I said, you know, you fucking bleed just like anyone else, Chris. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't say this to embellish myself out. And I was a fucking organiser of crime. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't fucking sit back like some fucking dumb fuck like the shad on Blue Murder, fucking sitting there with just it's, fucking these tough looks on me fucking face. They really do and embellish it, it mate. Oh, well, like, and I think Peter Phelps, fucking 90% Peter Phelps played it shorter than me, played your oh, role. Yeah, he but, he's got to be 6'2". Well, I can never get the right size of people, especially fucking Ned, he was 6'6". Six, six, <laughs> and wearing bloody you know, flannies and you know, all this crap. And, yeah, you know, yeah. the fight scenes and all that bullshit. Fucking yeah. never happened like that. Fucking Ned run behind the fucking bar <laughs> after fucking King hit me. I think there was a scene that we just walked into a oh, pub and started yeah. trashing the joint or oh, something. Oh yeah, like that, that. no, that happened. Yeah, that, yeah. that one happened. Yeah. But, but it wasn't against bikies or against footballers. Yeah, um, right. It was yeah. Anzac Day. You know, that yeah. was fucking 1984 or 85, might have even earlier. Yeah. But fucking, um, uh, that was a different matter. You know, it happened in the 70s, I think, late 70s. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, all of those sort of things took place. Even the shooting. But as I said, another thing that I'll, I'll say to Mr. Ray Mooney, I don't care what happened down there in Melbourne if uh, fucking Laurie Prendergast's brother gave information against Chris and they and they fell out of I don't give a fuck. Flying fuck and I don't know if that's true, so I'm not going to comment on it. Yep. I only talk about what I fucking know. Laurie Prendergast was working up here Chris Vidale Flannery as a two-team partner to fucking execute his plan of taking over George and fucking others. And we were probably going to be in the firing line somewhere along the line, as I said to Ned. Yeah. And you're going to fucking go. At the end of the day, he'll take you out of fucking play. Yeah. Because yeah. he's already got the coppers fucking sweet, Chris. Yeah. Right? So yeah. far of his wife saying, calling us to Ray Mooney, telling her one day that we were the Jack gang. Yeah, you know, right. like yeah. everyone in organised crime had the coppers on side. Yeah. Everyone in organised crime had politicians, fucking, you know, policemen, judges, fucking whatever. judges, yeah. magistrates, fucking yep. you name it. We had fucking barbecues with them to fucking Sweet bruise up the fucking up. honey pot. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Didn't mean we paid them every fucking day yeah. or every week or did what they told us. We never fucking did that. Ned might have. Yeah. Right? I fucking chose my fucking own principles and my rules to run my fucking things my way. Ned didn't fucking like that. Chris didn't like it. I was involved in the conversations around Michael Drury at the back of Chris's house. Yep. I went there for another reason to go and see him and walked in on him and Ned sitting out the fucking back having a jab. Yep. So they were having a fucking talk. As I say, when she came outside, Kathy, I wouldn't fucking talk in front of her. And she'd see me, she didn't like me, so she'd go back in the fucking house anyway. Yeah. So we're sitting down there this day and they were talking about shooting Michael Drew. I already know that he'd been confronted and bribed by Rogerson and that he didn't accept the fucking deal. Yeah. I know that happened. So I was involved in the life. Yeah. Right? And then they walked into there sitting down at the back of this fucking house and the conversation came up about it. And I said, why the fuck, as I said about the fucking gang takeover, stupid fucking thing, they got nothing to take over, yep. leave me fucking out of it. If it had any common sense, yeah. and they were running everything that was fucking illegal, yeah. I would have been in like fucking yeah, like yeah, Flynn, yeah. right? But I still wouldn't have been there with him in the end. I wouldn't have trusted him as far as I could throw him because I realised how he operated once he got out. Yeah. And I'd seen him in action and full of that, the two. I've heard, yeah, he you know, that, that's what he did before he'd yeah. go and do a, a fucking yeah. shoot. I've been going. with him just after it happened and fucking he'd turn up at fucking dinner and he'd turn up late and he'd be full of fucking that and he'd try and get Ned to have it. And yeah, yeah. I fucking I said, don't get bucks from me, man. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, I never took my own fucking poison. No, yeah. no one no one in our fucking team did. That was the only attempt Ned ever had. Yeah, right. But um, yeah. that fucking night. But look, Chris run around with fucking Prendergast. I don't know what happened in between the times that you knew him, uh, Mr. Mooney, and I don't want to know. I don't really care. But at the end of the day, you weren't involved in organised crime. You're a playwright. You're a fucking crime fucking buff. You're a fucking. You, you tell all your stories. Some might be true. Some are embellished, just like every crime report. Because at the end of the fucking day, only people on the inside of this fucking life yeah. that ran in it know the fucking facts. Yeah. I know I don't say to embellish myself and lift myself up that I wouldn't, 
everything I tell you, I picked up fucking flattering myself in a fucking brawl in Circular Key and shot him over my fucking shoulder. Yeah. You know what I mean? He didn't fucking come back and want to fucking kill me for it, but he wasn't happy about it. Yeah, yeah. Was, you know, we had words about it. <laughs> Someone don't fucking touch me while I'm fucking into a stink. He wasn't a huge bloke, was he? No, 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 I, no. I thought no. he was, but he was I don't know if he could hold his hand up or not. I'd never yeah. seen him in a fucking uh, fist fight. Never, yeah. never. I heard he but, did that, um, but again... I, you know, maybe he could have, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, I knew that Laurie was a, a pretty fucking well too, you know, in yeah. his day. And, um, you know, we'd already been acquitted on a couple of big murders down there, machine gun murders in the bathtub of, you know, the, the old Kane fucking brothers. That was, that was and, interesting. And, uh, you know... That was tough boys. But, yeah. um, you know, and they didn't muck around. The wife shut a gob and I'm walked yeah. away. You know, she was there. You know, yeah, where, yeah, on the yeah. other hand, Kathy Flannery, when Chris disappeared, uh, fucking um, made all these accusations, and then when he got shot out of his house, yeah. rung up my partner in crime, Nettie, and said, Abbo just drove past, I just saw him, and he just tried to shoot us with a machine gun. He was driving his green jack. Yeah. What, I'd yeah. turn up there in my own fucking car? <laughs> Oh, fuck me dead, I know I was fucking sweet and we could get through the break, but fucking not my own car. You weren't a, f- a fan right? of Kathy's And I wouldn't have fucking missed her. <laughs> you weren't you know? a fan of Kathy's But I wouldn't, right? no. But she was a horrible woman. No. Yeah. Well, 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 no, she was very, no, she was very unliked up here. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and for good reason. She was no good. Yeah. And, uh, and as it turned out, she was an informed. She gave evidence against fucking um, uh, Tom Domican that he was the one who did it when she'd already blamed me. Yeah. And I went to Tom Domican's lawyer and said to him, call me as a witness, mate. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's tape recorded evidence that would have gone between me. Yeah. Our phones were constantly monitored. Yeah, right. So I, I wasn't there that day. I remember Ned calling me and he said, oh, where the fuck you been? Because yeah. he couldn't get hold of me for hours. Yeah. He thought that what she'd said over the phone to him, that I was the one down in Sydney trying to knock him when we lived at Lake Macquarie. Yeah. He said, well, where you been for hours? Yeah. I said, well, it's none of your fucking business. As a matter of fact, I've been out on me fucking boat fishing. fishing. <laughs> right? So, if I would have got out of the car and just fucking finished the fucking boat off, yeah. you know what I mean? I, I don't fuck around. If anyone who knows me, who run around with me up here, they know I'm not talking through me ass. If I'm going to fucking get you, I don't tell you. Yeah. But I'll just fucking turn up there. They know I'm the first one in the fucking door. Even yep. in the hole of Ned's gang, I was the first one in the fucking door for a robbery. I was the first one in the door if it come to that. Yeah. And I've had Ned Smith, a lead big fucking serial killer, run away on me and fucking leave me fucking posted. Yeah, right. Well, I fucking hit someone on his behalf. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because he fucking shit himself and left me posted. Yeah. So yeah. he has embellished him fucking self in his story. Yeah, but yeah. what he said in his book was that Laurie Prendergast shot Michael Drury while Flannery yep. and Rogerson were other places to cover their ass. Now that's the facts. Yep. Yep. I wrote the same fucking thing. Yeah. And I didn't like fucking Ned. So if I was gonna say anything to embellish it or fuck that's I would good. have probably made the innuendo that I fucking took Chris out of play. I didn't. All I said was whatever ever took fucking place. I don't know, but someone did me a fucking favour. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because they tried to knock me then over over Michael Drury not dying. Now, even if you get a CD of Roger Rogerson, that's called Roger Rogerson. That's all yeah. it's called. And it's a two CD. Right. Two sides to it. And as there's two sides to every story. Yeah. Right? Except when you live on the inside. Right? So on that fucking thing, I was listening to it one day. And uh, many years ago when he made it, and he says on that tape, I sent Detective Anderson, John Anderson, down to see, who died of cancer, who was one of his friends, down to see Chris Flannery to sort out the gang wars. Right? Well, he didn't only send him there for the gang wars, he sent him there because of Michael Drury. They needed to shut it down. So they went to the house and they had a conversation. Now Ned was there, Kathy was there, Anderson was there with another detective, yep. who I'm not sure of, so I won't say his fucking name. Yep. And, and I can only say these names because they're fucking dead, otherwise I wouldn't be speaking about it. Yep. Right? So, and the girlfriend of someone, and she overheard the conversation. When she 
The following day, she told me that they were going to make me a fucking scapegoat for the underworld fucking murders, right? Of which I may or may not have been involved. I was involved in the gang war. There's no worry about fucking that. Yeah. Right? Was I going to be accused of the right murders? I've got no fucking idea or even they're gonna, what they were going to do, but I'm sure they were. But what they did, they gave me a gun. Ned gave me a gun after some conversation we had one day at the Belmont 16 footers when I was watching Sugar Ray Leonard fight and uh, against Marvis Marvin Hagler. Yeah. And I uh, can always remember the day. And I said, bring 5,000 with you because I'd already lost 5,000 on Roberto <laughs> Duran when he fought Thomas Hitman Hearns. And he got knocked out in the first fucking round. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right? So, so I lost me 5,000 on him. So I said, bring the 5,000. Now, even though I wasn't talking to him then. Yeah. I had nothing to do with him. I'd already left him and I was running my own fucking team again. Yeah. Right? Of armed robbers and drug dealers and fucking whatever organised crime does. Yeah. Right? So I operated that gang as well. Right? And during this time, this is when he started to do all this fucking crap. And then this came to pass. And so they decided they needed to set me up. Anyway, so Ned puts on a fucking meet with me this day of the fight, of yeah. which I won me 5,000 back on when Leonard fucking beat him, right? Yeah. So at the end of it, we sat down at the table at the 16 footers and I said, right, what is it you want to discuss with me? And he said, I want to just say that you were fucking right all along, yeah. that you fucking, everything you said to me has come to fruition. I know they're going to try and knock me as well. I said, wacky do you just fucking what the fucking <laughs> pen. Shit, it's the fucking fan, now the pennies hit the fucking floor, right? Yeah. You'll fucking finally wake up, Bill. So he said, but what I want to do is this. He said, I know we fucking... I said, well, there's a matter of 50,000 for a start. You fucking stole 50 grand off me. Yeah. This is why we had the fight in Chinatown, yeah, right? right? And yeah. uh, I went there to fucking kill him. And if he didn't pay me, I was going to stab him to fucking death. Yeah, now, right. He knew that. He even says in his book how violent I fucking was. <laughs> in comparison to fucking him, I made him look like a fucking baby. Yeah, really. You know, but he was the fucking prolific headline. You've only got to watch that Vice uh, story on me. You know, yep. the p podcast they did on Vice. Yep. And you'll see the assistant commissioner get uh, police get up there and, and then he'll say the same thing. Ned Smith was a prolific headline and I was the organiser of the crimes. Yeah. Which I was. So, yep. And I'm the one who put the fucking crew together. I never did it in front of Sheila's where Reed sitting on a whole court in front of his girlfriend. I just shut up because I never talked in your home unit. Yeah, yeah. Didn't talk in front of fucking women. Yeah. So, you know, I let him walk around oh, with his cool. fucking... Yeah. But he had the police work. There's yeah. no doubt he had the fucking power with them. Yeah. You know. Did and he have any idea, you think, Graham? Did Chris have a clue when it happened? When he, did he have an idea that he was on borrowed time? Oh, he, he would have once once yeah. that took place yeah. and the fucking pressure started coming on. I mean, the first pressure I realised I was going to get off it, the fucking I was pulled up, I was down the rocks and uh, the fucking police pulled up. Actually, I was with Ned Smith for some reason and I was standing on the corner uh, near the Captain Cook Hotel down near the Lord oh, Nelson. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, they fucking pulled up. We were waiting for someone to turn up for some fucking reason. Next one, the detectives turn up. This American copper got out. And uh, the Yankee fucking voice had brought him over here for fucking, you know, to help in the investigation. You know, so to keep the corrupt ones out of it. Because oh, there right. were plenty of corrupt ones back on fucking Rogerson's side. And, yeah. right? so, what was he, like an FBI guy or some... some yeah, yeah, fucking ex or something like that. I don't know the full story, do we? Yeah. Anyway, he said, we want to have words with you, Graeme, in regards to the shooting of Michael Drury. I said, don't try and fucking pull me into that shit, mate. Yeah. So I realised that I was going to get... So I went out and seen Rogerson yep. out of Clovelly him and another bloke called Johnny Openshaw. And they were just having a beer in a pub and uh, I didn't go there to meet John. John was a detective. But I went there to see fucking uh, him. Ned was there when I got there. And I said, uh, I just got pulled over by the... F and they're trying to fucking throw the blue on the moon. Oh, I don't, don't know who that is. I'll have a sniff around. and yeah. Well, he never fucking did. Yeah. But yeah. at the end of the day, because he didn't die, Drury, yeah. you know, when Laurie Prendergast shot him, right, and fucking didn't kill him, it brought the fucking pressure on. Now, they were going to get through the fucking break otherwise. Yeah, right? Everything yeah. was going to be swept, but there was going to be still fucking pressure from the outside. You've got to remember that organised crime doesn't hold the fucking cards to everyone. 
Yeah, yeah. Right? You know, so there's always a different squad with different powers. And the new commissioner that took over, uh, I should not fucking remember his name. Fucking old swine he was. was he he yeah, just yeah. said, I want them off the fucking street. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. you know, I want them off the street. I don't give a fuck what you do. Yeah. This, this gang's got to go. So they're still thinking I'm part of that fucking gang and, and yeah. I'm not. I'm running my own show. The fucking coppers know that. Yeah. And they know that we'd had a fallout. So, anyway, he cons me into this fucking day, Ned, that we're going to take fucking Chris out and fucking two other blokes from the gang. Yep. Right? From my gang that I put in there yeah, because right. they turned as well. Right? So I said, all right. And then I thought to myself, yeah, and you're going fucking next. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You'll probably stay there with them. Because yeah. that, you know, and that was the way I was going to do it. That's how fucking heavy it got because I weren't going to the fucking Nick. Yeah, right? yeah. For fucking life over a copper, I never shit and do a Colin Winchester fucking set up. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, when the yeah, Italians fucking, fucking murdered him. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, ne- next fucking minute, they've tried this set up. I've already told you before the story about that. And anyone who hasn't heard it, just go back and listen. And, you know, they tried to set me up, and Ned was involved, and he passed a gun through the window. He was supposed to come with me. We we're at the Lord Wolseley Hotel at Oldham. Yeah, right. And he said, we'll take this gun and some money up to the, to the boys because they're on the run. They just tried to kill Flannery, uh, uh, George Freeman at the time and George got onto it, yeah, right? right? So that was another reason why George would want him fucking dead yeah. and why I'd want him fucking dead. Yeah, right? yeah. Everyone had a fucking motive, yeah, right. you know, because, and the fucking police had a motive. Yeah. Right? So they fucking just set it up and they just said, right. So it was a good plan. And it was fucking good business. I yeah. even said it to Rogerson on a plane one day. It's, it was fucking smart business, mate. But it's fucking missed. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So what they did, as we were about to leave the hotel, Ned said, I just got a phone call off Roger. I've got to wait here for him. He said, can you take the gun up? Yeah, I said, what about the money? Yeah. He said, oh, fuck him, don't give him nothing. Well, as I drove off, I thought, oh, that was a bit funny. Yeah. So I drove off with the gun just to go and deliver this fucking gun, keep him sweet. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, we're all pals again. And oh, stuff, yeah, right? yeah. So I get up there and I got followed all the way. As I say, I'd already met Laurie yep. before that, so I knew who Laurie was, but I hadn't seen him for a few months. Anyway, when we turned up this day, he coloured his hair a little bit more blonder. Oh, like right. Sandia. Yeah. Right, so I could see this panel van following me, and it followed me up through the fucking cross. And as I got into William Street, they had to park over here. We're in the traffic going up the hill. Yeah, right. And I'd just come through the city, which is dead that time of day, because all the shops in those days used to shut at midday. Yep. You know what I mean? We're talking 1980 fucking five or yeah. something, right? Yeah. Late 85, just before he fucking went missing. So then he fucking comes and tries to... So as we pull up the fucking lights, I'm getting ahead of myself here, now, as we pull up the lights, I look back and I could see this bloke and I thought, fuck, I know his head. I put down the window like that and I said, well, if he's a crim follow on me, yeah. he'll burr up. So I said, what are you looking at, you fucking dog? Yeah, yeah. Well, he just went like that and just wound up the window. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I thought, well, he didn't take fucking much offence to that. He must be a cop. That's what I thought. Yeah. So as we get, then as I'm driving, I'm thinking to myself, Jeez, I know that bloke, bloke's head. I kept thinking to myself. And I could see the curtains moving in the back. It was like an old Sandman panel. Oh, thing, yeah. A yeah, falcon, yeah. right? So a blue and white one. So I get up to the top of uh, near William Street and I go to King Arthur's Court Hotel. Yep. I get in there and they used to have a big bay window. So right. I get in there, it's right on the time they're supposed to be there. They're always on time. Yeah. Right? It's a rule in our team to always be on time. Otherwise... We'll give you five minutes, you're not here, I'm fucking going. Off. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I got there, I realised after ten minutes, I'm in the trap here because what I saw was a detective's car go up the street yep. and then the panel van. The panel van goes down first, goes up over the Coca-Cola sign and down the other side as if heading back towards the museum, yep. right back towards Sydney. And they park on the left-hand side of the road yeah. and then the detective car pulled up beside them. So naturally I'm thinking they're detectives. Yeah. But then I start to go through my head, you know, what am I fucking, why is no one here? Yeah. I've been set up. You've been set up, yeah. So instead of taking myself out of the equation and going up to the top of the cross and going bang left, 
going down through rust cutters bay and getting away. Yeah. I didn't. And the reason I fucking didn't, and the reason I never do shit like that is because I like to go into the lion's den and find out what the fuck it's about. Yeah. If yeah. I went left, I never would have known the fucking... So you stayed, down. you wanted answers. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I wanted an answer. So yeah. if they were going to be police, and I had a gun on me, or two guns, because I already had my own gun. Yeah. So when I went out, I went, that gun between my leg and the other gun between my leg. Yeah, this gun right. was empty. Yeah, yeah. I'm an answer me at the fucking time. Yeah. And then, so I'm wondering why the fuck I'm even got it. Oh, you know, did they have a spare bag, bag of fucking bullets? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, anyway, so... Interesting uh, stitcher, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, it was the, a good fucking stitcher. The adrenaline's going, you're thinking, it's all just about the shit. So I get out, get out in the, the car, yeah. and I go up William Street, turn right at the Coca-Cola sign, right at the fire station, and come down the hill. Out goes the police officer in front, as they'd been doing all the way. Right? Yeah. Then I jerry. They'd been in front of me all the time, and they were behind me. Yeah. So I'm still thinking, it's police, it's police, yeah. but why? Yeah. Right? And I'm thinking, a gun. It's got to be the fucking gun. Yeah. Right? But not knowing yet what it's about. Right? Didn't know that for quite a while. So I get down to the bottom of fucking William Street with the New Zealand Hotel. It's just before the museum. I turn right, went up towards a big cathedral, go around, get into Market Street. Uh, right on the corner of David Jones and fucking um, Castle Ray, I think yep. it is, and George, and then head down to Castle Ray Street. Yep. And on the other side is the police car pulled up, these wheels turned out to the right, in lock position, yeah. ready to block me. Yeah. So yeah. I know this is where whatever's going to occur is going to occur here. Yeah. So the panel van comes up behind me, yep. and I see daylight at the back of it. Yeah. Right. So the panel van doors have been opened up. Oh, shit. So... As I go through the lights, the detective goes to pull out. I went straight over to the right, yeah. up on the footpath. There was a bloke PMG thing, you know, with the plugs in oh, his ears. Yeah, I used to, yeah, the I just hit the cage, bowled him ass over fucking. <laughs> he went down the fucking hole. Sorry, mate. You know, <laughs> I didn't fucking hurt him, I believe. Anyway, then I reversed up the fucking street in the castle race street and, that, and spun my car, but I was facing going, it was a one way street and all the buses are coming down. Yeah. So when I look over to the corner, I got me fucking gun out, got out of the car, and they jump out of the fucking back of the panel van with ballers on. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, yeah. I knew straight away yeah. it was fucking crooks. Right, so, and the cops were on side with them. So that's how it operated. Yeah, fucking yeah. bad situations, get rid of a bad situation. Yeah. Good business plan. Didn't fucking work. Didn't work, yeah. So I went, whoosh, back in the car, took off, went down to the fucking um, Lord Nelson Hotel, handed over my gun, well, fucking bloke who I knew there, just to take him downstairs from him and the other gun that I had. And I sat there fucking rattling my brain, I had a beer, and I went, right, I'm going to go back, I'm just going to pretend like I don't know he had something to do with it, but I know in my heart, yeah. Ned set me up. So I go back and I thought, because if you blow up then, and I yeah. pull out the gun and I fucking just shoot him, yeah. then I might have been fucking wrong. I had plenty of room to fucking shoot the big prick anyway, yeah. right? But I thought, I'm going to create something, I'll never find out what's fucking going on. I need to yeah. know. So that's, and you know, it's the same about if someone, they say, oh, he's a fucking dog. Go, okay, mate, I, yeah. don't, I don't know who he is, so I'm yeah. not going to fucking call him. Yeah. When I fucking know, see the facts, hear it on a tape, I'll then fucking I'll believe it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Then I'll <laughs> fucking believe it. Yeah. So i got to know the facts. And the facts, if you look back over 20 fucking podcasts I've ever done, yeah. I don't fucking differ from the fucking facts I tell now. Yeah. You know, I'm always tell it to the fucking truth because that's how it happened. Yeah. I don't sit here and go, uh, uh, what happened then? Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. or write the story. Yep. Yeah. You know, I remember when I wrote my book, Lenny McPherson was sitting beside me in Sassnock Down and he said, how the fuck can't you... Um, how do you just keep writing and fucking tell them it like that without thinking? I said, because I know about it. it That's it. It's coming. I know yeah, what I'm talking comes. about. Yeah. So yeah. I don't have to stop and say, oh, what can I put in here to make myself fucking sound good? Yeah. I mean, I was someone who wanted to fly under the radar yeah. until yeah. years later and fucking blew up. Yeah. You know, who I was, what I fucking did. Then I started getting nominations in the paper all the time for this or that or fucking this crime that I was a fucking prolific armed robber. Right? Of which I was, and never been convicted of. Yeah, right, right I mean. So that doesn't mean that I was fucking sweet all the time and I was paying because I only paid sometimes. 
I was just fucking good at do what I fucking did. Yeah. That's why I was the fucking organiser. Yeah. You know what I mean? How and did you go that day? What did, what, what did so, next? So that day, when I went back, we're going off the subject a bit. So. No, no. So, fine, but, no fine, that's fine. right. Yeah. So I'm just going to the way with you. So anyway, so I turn up that day and I said, no, I'm going back to where Ned is. So I walked back and I had the fucking thing in a bag with a fucking glove on me. Yeah. Right? And I'd already wiped it down, fucking done everything to it. And I said, here's the fucking gun. Yep. Someone just tried to knock me yep. or kidnap me. I don't know the full story yet, but he was so fucking... I remember walking around the corner from the lane yeah. in Bullborough Road in Oldham. Oh, I and know. I you know, know, yeah. you know where yeah. the pub is on yeah. the corner there? And I walked out of the lane way around the corner. He's fucking jaw nearly fucking collapsed. You know what I mean? He couldn't fucking believe I was still fucking here. Yeah, yeah. But that was the act of fucking him and fucking Prendergast together. They weren't that fucking good at what yeah. they were fucking doing. Everyone they were having a go at, Domingan included. And yes, they were on the bike together, Mr Mooney. Right? I know that 100% because I was involved in conversations with it. Yeah. You know, I don't make it up. I couldn't give a fuck. Yeah. You know, I, I just don't look and pull up some fucking name out of the fucking ass. Yeah. Uh, for yeah. some fucking unknown reason. Yeah. That's who it was. They, they were videoed up here. They were fucking pictured together. Yeah. Oh, we know they were running together. Yeah. And I fucking know. Been yeah. with them in the fucking air crew bar up the fucking top with George Freeman with fucking all of that. Been there. Yeah. Saw them. Yeah. And I talked to them. Yeah. And, yeah. But at the end of the day, I came back. I drove around the fucking block, parked my car, and I walked back into Bullwire Road, which, as you know, the street runs down further from that hotel. Yeah. And there's little tenement houses, dotted with tenement houses everywhere. So I jumped behind one of the fucking uh, tenement houses there, and I sat on the garden fucking bench there, yeah, right. and just looked up the street. And yep. waited about an hour and a half, maybe a little bit longer. And next minute, up they pull in their own cars. Yeah, right. Flannery, Renegas, yeah, right. Rogerson, and they all walked down the fucking street. Then another detective. The other one that I don't know his name of. Yep, yep. Right? So Anderson must have gone somewhere. But it was Anderson who was involved in the first fucking part. I don't know who the copper was. He was driving because I didn't get a real good fucking look at him. Right? So they went in the pub, Graham? They what? went in the pub and all met together to fucking oh, discuss. Oh, the facial expressions. They would have gone <laughs> with fucking mist. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So that put pressure back on me. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So the whole fucking lot of them. Yeah. So in the end, then George knew he tried to knock him. Yeah. I knew he tried to fucking knock me. I knew Ned had fucking tried to. So I went, right, let's fucking go to war. We're going to fucking war, we'll go to war. You know, I didn't have a fucking gang. I'm one fucking out now. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I hadn't moved on to the other But you've outsmarted them. I fucking outplayed them. them. Yeah. Always outplayed them. God, it would have been funny. I've uh, done it all my life. I don't know why. I'm maybe... I'm just fucking, look, I've always let this be me guide, not me yeah. brain, me consciousness. Yeah. You know, it's like that Jiminy Cricket used to sing in Disneyland. Yeah. Let your conscience be your guide. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. So there's things that I'll do, there's things I won't. Yep. I'll fucking go in and be the first in the door and go whack, whack for the gang survival. Yeah. I will not take a dollar for a fucking hit. Yeah. Been offered money, yeah. will not fucking do it. That's why I'd never liked hired guns. I don't yeah. like people who, because they got nothing else going for them. Yep. He was a shit arm robber. He couldn't do fucking arm robbery to save his fucking life. <laughs> right? Flam <laughs> Flannery, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. You know? Look, as Mr. Mooney said, he's known him since he was a young bloke. They were raiding, they met in the can. They were both in for rape at the time. Yeah. Whether they were verbal, fabricated, I've got no idea, and I'm not going to make an assumption about it because I don't know. Yep. And I'm not belittling on Mr. Mooney for his opinions. Yep. The only thing I'm just saying is, you can't say that these blokes weren't doing that when I know the fucking facts they were. What yeah. you're doing is having a guess. It's like the, everyone in the crime books, from Tony Reeve to Bob Bottom to all of these crime fucking writers, yeah. to the newspaper people. We paid the fucking coppers to write the fucking stories. Yeah. They'd get up there and put a different identikit pictures in the fucking paper of someone who did a robbery. Yeah, right. When it was yeah. fucking us. Yeah, you got here. Right? So <laughs> no one had a clue who they were fucking looking for. So the facts never come out. Only those who live on the fucking life. I yeah. keep saying this to these blokes on fucking TikTok and Instagram who've never lived on the life. 
that I live with and the people I run with don't fucking have an opinion. You can have an opinion, yeah. but don't state a fucking fact about something like Ned was a serial killer or fuck. He's killed two fucking people. Yeah, yeah. Right? One he stabbed yeah. in a drunken rage at Coochie and he strangled another bloke called fucking Johnson, the, the playboy, right. in his solicitor's flat, who's dead now, Mr Bellamy, and the only reason I say it, yeah. at fucking Dover Heights. And uh, at the bloke he stabbed the tow truck driver. Was it a tow truck driver? Or? Yeah, he stabbed yeah. a tow yeah. truck driver. Yeah. And, yeah. and that was the other one he stabbed. Yeah. Right? As far as being involved with Sally Ann Huckstep's murder, that was he was he on. always Ned sits behind the fence. Like he did when I've run in the fucking door and I go bang on it and he's gone and left me. <laughs> yeah. right? right? So there goes the fucking diminishment of the fucking house of cards falling down on fucking Nettie Smith's fucking big fucking serial killer fucking theory. Yeah, yeah. You know, and all the look but it's true when he rolled saying. on the police, yeah. they put in the because Ned wrote his book. Yep. And then he mentioned all these murders. Then he tells his cellmate, who wires him up on behalf of the police, yep. that he killed all of these fucking people. Yep. So that's the headlines then. And so the police said, right, we're going to charge you with the fucking lot of them because you turned on us after yep. we've given you up for fucking 22 years. Yeah, right. right? Yeah, yeah. So next minute he was fucked. Right? Because the media makes out he's killed hundreds, oh, sort of. Yeah, fucking yeah. all the time. Yeah, no, you think so but he was media. behind the scenes. Yeah, He'd yeah. lure the blokes. He lured like Harvey Jones. He lured Harvey Jones to the pub yeah. on the uh, agreement that he was going to pay fifty thousand dollars in cash, yeah. right, to Ned for Ned to give to Roger over a gold bullion thing that Harvey was out on bail over, yeah, right. right, that he stole this gold bullion. So fifty thousand, he was happy to do that because he didn't want to go back to jail. Yeah, right. Yeah. So he turns up at the fucking pub. Ned takes the money and he said, listen, come out the back here. So out the back of a little star hotel. Now a bloke who dropped him off is a bloke called Bob the Basher. Bob is a fucking goose up the cross, a fucking bully and a standover who dead but women. Uh, you know right. what I mean? He was a Croatian. Fucking man, as a cut snake. I'd known him since I was a kid playing football. Yeah, right. Yeah. And he turned up and uh, he said, um, so he's sitting out in the car waiting for Harvey to come out. Of course he didn't come out. And so he went to the police and told them that Ned carted him away. But, you know, the last time he'd seen him, he was with Ned. So he didn't even see Ned because the fucking pub doors were fucking shut. So, you know, we yeah. didn't see him. But he goes in there, Ned takes him out the back and he said, listen, there's a rip-off going to happen tonight out at fucking near the, near the airport. Yep. He said, I want you to go with the boys. And he said, you'll get your 50 grand back. We're going to earn fucking big money. So Harvey and his stupidity and his loyalty to fucking Ned, who loved him, I mean, he fucking loved him. He loved him like a fucking nearly homosexual relationship. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, what I mean? He was a bit fucking weird, uh, Harvey. But and it, but he was a fucking pest, and he caused a lot of trouble. But yep. he was a he was smart in a lot of ways. Like he could speak seven languages, very fucking intelligent. But he was a fucking imbecile. He get guns, and he was always pulling them out. And he was dropping my name and Ned's name all over Sydney, everywhere he went. Yeah. So he got into Sheila's nightclub this night in North Sydney and fucking shot up the place with a gun, as he always fucking did. Graham, you're not going to believe I was there that night. Oh, when? I was underage and I yeah. was there that night. All I remember yeah. is a kerfuffle, yeah. a couple of cracks, which yeah. we thought were uh, firecrackers. Yeah, yeah, I used to live in Sheila's. Yeah, fucking, right. And then I just saw a big kerfuffle out the front, bounces yeah. and, and a big bloke. Yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. yeah, well, that's which, what he was, yeah. a big, tall, fucking wiry fucking yeah, skinny yeah. bloke. Yeah. Right, anyway, so I think I was 16. he gets away. <laughs> he gets through the fucking break and he's out. Right? So I mean he gets away from him. Yeah. So the police are dirty on him. So they go and see fucking Ned, the head people from fucking North Sydney, and they said, You created this fucking goose. Yep. You get rid of him. Yeah. Right? Your so Ned on. fucking did. Yeah. So so he organised it. Now another bloke, I'll just call him the frog. Did he end up at right. botany? He ended up at botany? Yeah, he didn't see him end up at botany. He yeah. ended along with about nine other fucking people. <laughs> yeah. Maybe even more. There'd be Who some knows a lot of people out there, I think. Right? Well, yeah. there's a lot of people. They're going to only go and call it Natty Smith Drive. See, this is where all this bullshit comes from because... But the media seems to fuel Yeah, it, but they? he might have been behind some yeah. of those. Yeah. But he certainly, in the ten years I ran with him, he never fucking shot a fucking soul. Yep. So, so much for the gangster reputation. Yep. And that was in the fucking heyday, mate. Yeah. After that, he went downhill. He became an alcoholic. His liver went. 
Yeah. You know, we got fucking the jaundice, he got fucking everything, went Did down he get, on the, he get on the... No, 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 he never got on the gear. No, yeah. it was a rule of all of our crews. Yes. Yeah, none of us the... get on the fucking gear. Yeah. None yeah. of us. No, yeah. None of the three fucking gangs. The old school, Lenny and them, and they never had nothing to do with drugs. Yeah. They had the fucking media will tell you otherwise. Yeah. I bought them all of those fucking Tony Roos, they'll make up all this bullshit. Yeah. I mean, he even said I was a Maltese gangster, so he would yeah. never fucking clue what the fuck I was. I so, heard Stan Smith was, was very anti look, look, drugs. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Stan well, was the only one who, who the, wanted the, the gang the to move stuff. into the drug because he could see the new fucking era. Yeah, right. You know, and yeah. they didn't want to play. Yeah, right. And so he had a fucking bit of a fallout with them and he fucking left them. Yeah. And so he went overseas, did his own thing for a few years, run with European gangs over there and was importing fucking tons of hash, oh, okay. fucking marijuana. It was heaps right? of that in the 80s. And hash, I'm talking tons. Yeah. I'm not talking fucking few kilos. We're talking yeah. containers. Yeah. And oh. they used Mickle Hurley gang. You know, I can say all those things now because they're all fucking dead. Yep. And Mickle was the fucking head of the Furk and Thieven gang and then they got into the drug trade. Because he had everyone sweet on the wharf. He grew up on the wharves in fucking Piermont. They knew every tally clerk, every fucking bloke. They knew to know all the seamen. Yeah. You know, because they were part of the team. Yeah, well, yeah. So, But they weren't a violent gang. Yep. But if they needed fucking help, we were the ones that helped them. Yep. You know, if they had any heavy issues, we helped them. Yep. There were some very fucking brilliant thieves and fucking robbers in that fucking gang. They were yep. fucking top class. You know, they were part... They got taught by the old kangaroo gang, Nickel on that. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, they were fucking brilliant at what they did. You know, when they stole the Dior diamond, they'd already got in there, broke in the night before, made a fucking fake fucking hole. They put the D or diamond up there, they fucking pulled it out from underneath, put another one on top and put it back <laughs> in while the security guards were standing around them. <laughs> now the coppers were involved in that and they got fucking, uh, they ended up getting ripped off for it. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And, uh, and it ended up fucked because they couldn't break it down to how they wanted to do it because it's a fucking massive diamond. It was about 2,000 carats. Yeah, yeah. The D or diamond, the or fucking <laughs> something diamond or what. Anyway, getting back to uh, where was I? Um, uh, where were we? Neddy, Neddy and, yeah. and So uh, after Chris. all that shit had happened, yep. I, well, Chris went missing some six or eight weeks later. Yep. Right? Which so, I wanted to ask you about. Right. Yeah. Well, Chris went down and he definitely went to start his car that day and someone had fucked it up. Yep. Right? So that when he disappeared, he didn't disappear yeah. and get shot at fucking George's place. Yep. Right? disappeared out the fucking front when he hopped into a car. Yes. He was gone by the time they got up to the fucking, yeah. you know, the, the inner city. Yep, right? right. Heading out wherever they were going. Yeah, right? right. So he was gone then, right? Did he head now, to the fish markets, do you think, on a trawler? Or what are, you, what are your, what water, look, whatever you can say? He wouldn't be too right? far, far away from the fucking, uh, fucking sandy shores. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, you know, Look, I'll tell you something. As I've said to you before, I was an extremely psychic person. I've had psychic things happen to me all my life. Yep. One day I called. I can call on a spirit. I can manifest it to happen. I just call, keep calling on it to come. One night I'll give you, for instance, after Stan Smith died in 2010, I said, if you, still, if you can still hear me and acknowledge me, I want you to come here and see me. Now, my daughter's the same as me. She's had the same things as I have. Yeah, it's the reason I survived, mate. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I believe, I trust that guidance that I'm given. Yep. Right? And that guidance is me consciousness, and I understand. If it comes to me, it's like betting on a horse. I'll go, I'm going to back that. And I was there one the other day, my old Merc. Yeah, right. right? And I went, oh, I fucking lie. That was 22 to 1, so I backed the fucking bowl of him. <laughs> you know, it's one of them conscious thoughts. So Beautiful. that's what you've got to go with, that... What yeah. people call the gut feeling is actually comes from there. Yeah. Right? Your spirit. So I called upon the spirit of fucking Stan Smith to appear. Now, Stan didn't appear as such in the visible form. What happened, I sung my way, and I often sung my way when I was out in nightclubs or, you know, up the air crew bar. Yeah. Because I was a frustrated, probably entertainer when I was a kid. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And I could sing. And I probably couldn't say, fucking yeah. blow out a fucking note today because my throat's fucked. But the the old days, I used to bang him out. Now, I sung at Stan's father's funeral, I sang at his funeral. 
and I sung my way. And this night, uh, what was I going to say? I was talking about something. That's right, and I asked him. I said, calm to me. Now, I've got a little music box on top of my fucking uh, table. Yep. I can't remember where it came from. I don't know if he got it for me or someone got it for me. And you had to wind it up. Mod to play was the music to my way. Yeah, right. right? Yeah. So I'm in bed. Next minute, the music starts playing. And I wake up and I went, no way. fuck. And my daughter calls out from the other room. Yeah. Dad. I said, yeah, Dad. My wife wasn't there. She was working away at the time. And I said, yeah, what's wrong? She said, Stan's in here. Right? He was hovering above her in the room. This is what my daughter's like. She can call on spirit teacher. She can't even walk into a graveyard without getting a headache. Yeah, really. I, yeah, because we not talked that, about I'm that. not like yeah. that. But, but she, she's really switched on me. So next minute I said, anyway, she came in the room and she said, oh, he was really fucking angry and cranky. And I said, oh, I could imagine he would be. I laughed because yeah. I said, he'd be pissed off because I used to always say to him, you've got to pay the fucking piper before me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You fucking knocked 16 blokes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He never got paid for them. He did it for the survival of the fucking gang. Yeah. He did it for the right fucking reasons in the life that we live. Mightn't be right to the fucking general public, yep. but it was right to us. That's what had to happen, that's what he did. That's why he was respected. Yep. Flannery was never respected. Yeah. Hired guns are not respected. Yeah. You know, they might be feared by people. Yeah. Was Flannery feared by me? No. Was, was I fear of Stan Smith? No. Yeah. I've told Smith, Stan to his face. Yeah. You know, well, we had a bit of a tiff one day. I said, mate, I couldn't give a fuck if you kill 35. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, we all fucking blew. Yeah. And that, that wasn't a threat to him. I was just telling him, I said, I'd rather respect someone who was fucking shooting at each other in the fucking war and having a go. Yeah. Know what I mean? Or, you know, I said, I respect you for what you've done. Yeah. But that doesn't make me fucking fearful of you. Yeah. You're yeah. fucking blue, same as I do. You're yeah. fucking flesh and bone and spirit, mate. Yeah. Know what I mean? Same as I am. So, anyone can fucking die. Yeah. I don't give a fuck how big you are. It's but one of our, but, the, thing about, but the thing yeah. about shooting people is that you get a big fucking ego out of it. Yeah. And when you start to do it and you travel down those roads, unless you can control this, yeah. that's going to overtake you. And that's what you'll do. You'll say, how fucking yeah. easy is this? Yeah. No, yeah. I'm about sending you mad unless you've got a fucking guilty conscience, conscience and, yeah. and you shit yourself about it. Yeah. That I know because I've travelled down the fucking road, so I speak through experience only for me. That I got a big fucking high out. Yeah. And I thought to myself, well, this is fucking dangerous. It's a dangerous way to fucking be. Yeah. You know? At the end of the day, I knew I could go like that any day of the fucking week. Yeah. The only thing that I was blessed with was this guidance and this spiritual connection. Yeah. Right, yeah. right? So, whatever it is that has ever saved me, it came from my mother. She taught me as a kid about my spirit. Yeah, always believing in it. So, mom, yeah. so I've always had things happen. So what I was getting at was I called on the spirit of Flannery one night. I wanted to ask a question of him. Now some people who have never experienced this are gonna find this fucking bullshit, oh, it's fucking crap. But they'll do it to like I'd have a lie detector test over anything I say. Yeah. But I fucking called upon him and Laurie Prendergast entered the fucking bedroom and sat on my fucking bed. Sat on the end of the bed and I woke up like that. I knew something was going to happen because the colour of the room changed. Sure. Right? And I knew the mood was different. I woke up and I thought, oh, that's a bad entity. I, I went, fuck off. Go to the light. Yeah. Right? That's what you say to them. Anyway, next one I sort of put my head down again and next one I felt someone sit on the bed. So that's where they always sit there. If they're coming to you in your bed, they'll always sit on the end of the bed. For some reason, I don't know what it is. Anyway, I sat on the end of the bed and it was Laurie Prendergast. And before I could open my fucking mouth, same thing, the spirit just said to me, you trusted Ned too much, yeah. right? In his face, he had sand all through his eyes and through his mouth. Oh. So you take from that what you fucking well, made, well, yeah, yeah. all right? Fuck. You take that with what you made. But at the end of the day, they had to go. Yeah. So they went. So after that, I said, right, well, fucking Ned's going. Yeah. Huh? So whoever got fucking 
Laurie and fucking Ned, yeah. uh, uh, Laurie and fucking Chris, good luck to them. Yeah, you know? yeah. And at the end of the day, if you want to live by that fucking sword, you're going to fucking die by it. And they fucking did. They, they yeah. went overboard as I told them, don't fucking do it. You'll bring the house of cards down. Yeah. Which it did. So, uh, you know, that was the error of the fucking, the greenest fucking day going. Of yeah. fucking, you know, being able to do what we wanted to do, when we wanted to do it. And if we hit a fucking hurdle, we could pay for it and usually get through the break or get a small sentence. Yeah, right. Right? Yeah. What fucked me was I stabbed the police prosecutor and then that fucked me because I'd wounded one of them then. I yeah. cut his fucking throat and I was sent to the prison only they found out. But the, as the judge said, as far as I'm concerned, it was two criminals meeting down the laneway. Yep. And for what purpose they were meeting, I don't know. So I'm not going to give him a life sentence. Yeah. Or I'm he gonna was bring dirty, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he was everyone, everyone well, yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. We had, that was part of the organised crime circle. Yeah. Yeah. He was part of that. So we needed him for the courts, to get into the courts. Yep. And even though we had magistrates and judges, well, uh, there might be a magistrate we don't have, yeah. but he has. Yeah. Right? So he'll change it and get it changed over to another court. Yeah. You get into trouble, you give me 40 grand, I give them fucking 20, we put 20 in our kit. Yep. Right? You're through the break and fucking whatever we're going to get for you. Yeah. And what we tell you you'll get, you'll fucking get. Yes. But that, that was how it was. It couldn't be otherwise. If it was otherwise, then they fucking paid for it. Yeah. Right? So, and we didn't give a fuck, we'd punch the shit out of them. As we've done with the organised crime squad, yeah. had a couple of squads that are chasers. We flogged them. So, yeah. you how, the, a few how does that make us fucking jacks men? Yeah. Well, we kicked the fucking shit out of them. You had a few barnies with them up the oh, cross side of the years, didn't you? Up the fucking fucking cold. And, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> fucking, fucking knocked them fucking cold. The federal police, the fucking state police. The organised crime squad. They wouldn't squad. have liked that, mate. They wouldn't you know, have liked that, no. no. I mean, we had a copper with us one fucking night. He was drinking with fucking Ned. He was a mate of Ned. Big bloke. I'd just say he came from Maroubra. Yeah. Big hands, big fucking willem bloke. Fucking pretty good bloke for a fucking copper. It, yeah. And he was drinking with us, and this bloke was overheard saying, as he was leaving this little club, I think I forget the name of it now, it was in the Imperial Arcade in... Uh, George in George Street yeah. and between there and Castle Road, right? Yep. So, uh, as he was leaving on the escalator, the organised crime cops, who were supposed to be doing surveillance on another fucking mob, yep. were fucking coming up the stairs and they said, let's fucking give it to them bastards, they're up here tonight. Yeah. Right? Because there's a crew of them. Yeah. Right? So that, they, you know, naturally they were going to suss out the fucking scene first, see yeah. how many of us there was, because we were scattered that night or in little spots. And... As they walked in the door, we said to the copper, when the other bloke ran back and told us what he'd overheard, yep. we told the, they said to the copper, go and pull them fucking idiots up when they come in. He walked up and he said, look, here's some money off the boys, I want you to have a fucking drink. Just fucking forget about what he said, tell them to go and get fucked. Oh. So he come back and he said, they told you to get fucked. So Ned run down first <laughs> and went fucking bang. Tex Moran went fucking crash, knocked one out, bang, it was fucking on. One yeah. escaped, tried to hide in the freezer. Yeah. I punched the shit out of him. And Bar stools are fucking. So we're into him, right? Yeah. So we, we fucking belt them. They all line up outside, tail between their legs and fuck off. Yeah. We had to pay over that, of course, yeah. because we got in the shit over it. Um, <laughs> another night, I was singing my way and the feds had followed us all day. Right? And so they were trying to keep up with us and they couldn't fucking handle the pace. Yeah, yeah. We were pretty seasoned fucking drinkers. You give them a little wave occasionally. Oh, fucking all. Well, no, we'd yeah. send them beers over. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you're yeah. going to sit here all night, you might have a drink. Yeah. So this night I get up to go and sing fucking that Terry King, who was the main singer up there in the top of the air crew bar, said to me, do you want to have a fucking song, mate? I said, yeah, good as go. So uh, I get up and I start to fucking sing. So, as I do, around comes this fucking copper who leaned up against the bar, fucking pissed, walks over and said, get off the fucking stage. Yeah. I said, oh, we've got an imbecile on the audience. Just being <laughs> quiet. So I screwed the mic up, walked out and went, fucking crap. <laughs> fucking left hook, he knocked him ass over red. Okay, Ned, Ned Smith and another bloke took off out the fucking door. Yeah. Right? Didn't want to be involved. And me and this other bloke, Tex, got into him. I know he punched the shit out of the feds, right? Yeah. Fucking flogged them. <coughs> Next day, they went to Mickle Hurley and they said, who the fuck do they think they are, Bashnia blokes? Uh, but like them, they weren't supposed to be getting on the piss fucking out of school. That's right. So they get into trouble over it too. Yeah, yeah. But They picked it. But yeah, we yeah. pay a fine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So but it might have cost us 30000 or fucking forty grand. So 
We didn't give a fuck. We had plenty. <laughs> so we paid. Right, so we'd just get through the fucking break. And that's how it fucking operated. Yeah. You know what I mean? We yeah. weren't there. You know, once in a fucking while, I might fucking walk into Darlinghurst yeah. with a fucking bag yeah. and just fucking hand it straight over the counter. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, and the fens would be outside going click, 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 click as I was coming out. I'm sure there's plenty <laughs> of fucking evidence to back that up. Me walking in with a bag and not coming out with one. <laughs> right? So, you know, yeah. that's how it fucking was. Yeah, yeah. But did I ever tell the authorities that? No. And if they put me before a fucking court of law, I fucking, of course I'd fucking deny it all. Yeah, of course, yeah. Just fucking embellishing it, <laughs> as, as fucking uh, Mr. fucking Mooney said that Ned did. You know, yeah. he didn't embellish, he wasn't fucking frightened of fucking yeah. Chris, you know. But yeah. he, he was told that he'd fucking put one in his back. I'll fucking give him that. Yeah. And so was I. Yeah, uh, you know, and uh, you so know, it when Chris I'm told of anyone who's yeah. fucking capable of fucking putting it down. So yeah, you know, you just got to learn to uh, read the room trick, mate. You got to walk into a room, know your situation, know it fucking well, and yeah, uh, if you know that you're in a little bit of froth and bubble, walk out with fucking pride and fucking back up later. Yeah, you know what I mean? I fucking uh, don't walk out with your tail between your fucking legs. And, uh, <laughs> no, no. Mate, it's fantastic. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to wrap it up shortly. I've got one more question yeah. before you go, Graham. Mate, you've been fantastic here today. That's right. Um, Sally Ann. Yeah. Ned? Ned was behind it, as I said. Ned was behind uh, the murder. Yep. And uh, did he do it on behalf of the police? Not that I'm aware of. Yep. I believe he did it straight out of hatred. The bloke that he was knocking around with uh, doing business with was a supplier to yep. her, yep. so it was a good situation to set her up. And so she was he talking did. a lot. No, she did. She, a she'd been minutes. mouthing off for years about it, and, and Ned minutes. carried fucking grudges. Yep. And right. as I say, look, he's been behind the scenes on two women. Yep. The murder of a girl called Lynn Woodward. He was behind the scenes on behalf of the fucking police. And when I was in jail, that yeah, was right. 1983, I yep. believe and near the end of 83, and him and the bloke that he gave up in the National Crime Authority for the murder, uh, I'll just call Max, because I don't know if he's alive or he's fucking dead, so I'll just give him a name. Yeah, right. So, he fucking knocks her, yeah. right? He killed her. Ned yeah. fucking set her up. Same as Ned set he up. He drowned her. Sally. Yeah. He got yeah. up there, he put her in the sleeper hole. Ned was very good at the sleeper hole. That's how he killed that Mark Johnson. He put her in the sleeper hole, he knocked her out, right. right? She scratched his face. Yep. Right. That's why. Be and because she's a Jew, they preserved the fingernails yeah, for yeah, some right. reason. That's where they got the blood samples that matched yeah, yeah. that matched him, but it also matched six thousand other people. Yeah. Right. So they couldn't convict him. Could, yeah. Okay. So what he did, he sat on the fucking bench on the fucking bank. The other bloke dragged her into the water, and he stood on her while she was knocked out and he was the one that struck the final fucking blow. Yep. As always, but Ned was sitting on the bank. I went to a psychic chiller one day and she told me the exact Absolutely. fucking thing as I know because yeah. he told someone I know very close yep. to my family, yeah. which I fucking blew up about, the facts that what happened. And he sat on the fucking bank, like with his hands on his elbows, watching, memorised by it all. Yeah, he was a sick fuck that way. I, he, I wanted to clear that up, yeah. so I'm glad we talked. I mean, he'd say to other people, I have luck when I get when I knock people. And yeah. I said to him one day in the car, who the fuck you ever knocked? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Who, who the fuck you knocked? Yeah. You ever knock and knocked anyone below being your company? Yeah. Right, yeah. I mean? Yeah. If anyone goes through the door, it's fucking me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, no, and I, other people in the gang did other ones. You yeah. know what I mean? So... No, it was he good was to have in. that from you, mate, because like with the media, you hear so much oh, bullshit that's and you hear a hundred different things. Did he do it? Did he? Have you know, I mean, Chris Murphy will tell a story and then he tells a joke with it that, you know, oh, this is the last time I'll fucking know for this bitch. And yeah. He was there and Rogerson wasn't fucking there. Yeah. Rogerson didn't kill fucking Flannery. Yeah. You know, yeah. yes, he fucking killed the fucking bloke he's in jail for now. It's fucking dumb as fuck. Just, just, oh, and just another thing say, I just wanted to clear up. Yeah, with please. Mr. Mooney, I couldn't believe the statement that he fucking made. He said, Roger Rogerson will go down in history as the biggest criminal in history. Yeah. Something along the lines of that. And I went, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. There were more dangerous fucking police in the fucking police force than Roger Rogerson 
and police that were more corrupt than Roger. He never took one single fucking dollar from me. It was a stupid fucking... It was so, it was so, and it was so dumb. Evidence and he all did over it, the place. And he did it with another copper red bean fucking giving information. He, he, he was still, um, you know, that was giving information against all the coppers in the cross, smacked them up. Yeah. You know, he knew that he was no fucking good. So he probably thought, oh, I can stand over him or something. Why'd you have this reputation? You yeah. know, but the fucking people he's alleged to have fucking knocked, he didn't fucking knock. He killed two in the line of duty and he murdered Warren Lee and Frenchy. Yeah. That's it. Fucking Skull Murphy in fucking Melbourne fucking got rid of fucking more than that. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like no, fucking, I just, I couldn't believe, and, and he must have been just cash-strapped, desperate to was, do... He was fucking yeah. hanging out for a quid. He knew his day the numbers had gone to quit. He'd fallen off a roof. His hip was fucked. His hip was You know, his hip was fucking him. damaged fucking severely. I don't know if he's had a replacement. Uh, oh, I'd say that he's probably had one in the can. He yeah. might have had one. Yeah. I don't know. Um, uh, but you know. it stuck out when your hip's fucked. You stick out a mile... And he was probably trying to do that, to pay the fucking cash for that. I don't know. I don't know the story yeah. behind it all. Right I know in front it, was, of the cameras. it was a desperate fucking act. It was. And yeah. I know he was going to give it to fucking blokes that I knew. Yep. And he was going to fucking unload the gear to them. And they were going to fucking pay him. They used to drink with them. Yep. Out of the fucking Mill Perra Hotel with the bike. He's fucking all had the yep. shootout years ago. But... For Roger, it was his fucking downfall. And yeah. at the end of the day, he was going to fall down in the fucking end. Yeah. And in between all that, he was working on behalf of the police, giving information to the fucking police about murders other coppers had done. Yeah. And no one knows this. And if they were getting letters of comfort handed up, that's why he only got three years with ten months on the fucking uh, pervert the course of justice, because the letter of comfort handed up by Clive Stern, the barrister. Yeah, right. you know, and the letter of comfort was that he'd helped in the investigation and found the body yep. of someone that this copper had uh, next to the copper's done fucking life over it and he's yeah. through the break. It's so, you know, the yeah. bloke who think he was as solid as a rock. Fuck it, mate. He, at the end of the day, he was a policeman. Yep. We were the fucking crooks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And Ned worked both of them. Yeah, yeah. Fucking right. simple. That's yeah. it in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then, Spriggers, mate. Thanks very much, Graham. No it's worries, been mate. Fucking champion for round four. No and, worries. Um, well, and Mr Mooney, I'm not having a go at you. I'm just trying to tell you the fucking facts, mate. And yeah. they are the facts. Yeah. No, I was going to mention that, like all the guests we have on, we, I'm really grateful because we're still a, a small mob. Uh, and Ray seemed like a, a, a very nice bloke. Oh, as, fucking as, yeah, as, smart as, as John and and, uh, and all the rest of it, you know, Gary and everyone we've had on. So yeah. we are grateful. We're not here trying to persecute no, anyone. I'm not trying to have but, a go at um, John either. No, yeah. no, it, we're not persecuting anyone. We're just. That's it. This man's lived it. No worries, mate. Thank you very much, Mr. Henry. No it's worries, great mate. seeing you. Mate, um, and we might try and chase up that mystery. Uh, See who else has fallen off the truck. <laughs> Good on all you, right. Graham. Thanks right very on, much. Mate. Take care, swingers, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Beautiful. Thanks. That's it.